Here we will draw a consolidation of the different brainstem levels into a single axial diagram. First draw an ovoid outline of the brainstem. Label the bottom as anterior and the top as posterior. We will use the left side of the page for the brainstem nuclei and the right side for the brainstem tracts. We will follow these same nuclear groups and tracts throughout our brainstem sections. Now divide the brainstem from anterior to posterior into its basis, tegmentum, and tectum. Within the basis, draw the corticonuclear, also known as corticobulbar tracts, medially, which innervate the cranial nerves. Lateral to them, draw the corticospinal tracts, which provide motor innervation to the body. Next, in the posterior basis and in the anterior tegmentum, label the supplementary motor nuclei. They comprise most notably, in the midbrain, the red nucleus and the substantia nigra, in the pons, the pontine nuclei, and in the medulla, the inferior olive. Next, in the anterior tegmentum, label the medial lemniscus pathway, the body's major large fiber sensory pathway. Lateral to it, label the spinal thalamic tract of the anterolateral system, the body's major small fiber sensory pathway. Then posterolateral to the medial lemniscus, label the trigeminal thalamic tracts, which carry sensory information from the face, and posterolateral to the spinal thalamic tracts, label the spinocerebellar tracts, which provide sensory input to the cerebellum. Next, label the broad reticular formation in the tegmentum. Then label the neurobehavioral cells. The raphe nuclei lie throughout the midline brainstem, the periaqueductal gray area lies in the midbrain, and the locus ceruleus lies in the pons. Now in the posterior tegmentum, laterally, label the cranial nerve nuclei for cranial nerves 5, 7, 8, 9, and 10, and medially, label cranial nerves 3, 4, 6, and 12. In midline, label the medial longitudinal fasciculus. Next, label the cerebrospinal fluid space, which in the midbrain is the cerebral aqueduct, and in the pons and medulla is the fourth ventricle. Lastly, label the cerebellar peduncles. The superior, middle, and inferior cerebellar peduncles all attach to the pons. The superior peduncle also attaches to the midbrain, and the inferior peduncle also attaches to the medulla. This concludes our diagram.